Hi everyone, I'm going to talk about ChatGPT and how it can work with Microsoft Access. You're hearing a lot about ChatGPT in the media and how it can help with Excel, Python, different programming languages, but I haven't heard anything about Microsoft Access. So I wanted to explore it and see what we could do. First thing I want to start off with is just creating a data set. Let's see if it'll do that. And I'm going to paste this in here so it's faster. Basically, I want to see if it'll make the Los Angeles Lakers starting roster by the name and their age. And looks like we have LeBron on there so far. It's looking good. And yeah, I think this works. I'm gonna put this into Excel just so you can broadly use this. You don't have to use it in Access if you wanna try something else. But for this video, I'm gonna focus on Microsoft Access. So I copied it, I'm gonna paste it in here. There we go. All right, just so we're clear there, I'm gonna save this and then we can just import this into Access. So I already have this in here, uh, but I just want to show you how to do it in case you want to do it on your own. So I went to new data source from file, Excel, and then you would just find it in there and import it. All right, I don't have a lot going on here. I have a blank form pretty much called main menu, and I have an employees form, and obviously I have the data set that I imported. So let's see what chat GPT can do for us. All right, let's say I just wanted to loop through one through five just in a message. So just count one to five, see what it can do for us. OK, it's starting to write some code for us. Let's see what we can do with it. A lot of times down here, it'll give you some instructions. Sometimes it's not terribly clear, but that's okay. Let's just go to create module, and we're just gonna throw that in here, okay? So you can test it by going like that. One, two, three, four, five, cool. All right, so we just create a function called loop example. You can change it to whatever, but uh, what we can do is, let's find a button here. Okay. Let's go right click, properties, unclick, code builder, and let's just throw that in here, loop example. So now when you hit that button, it'll do the function that you just made. All right, so that's simple. All right, let's try something a little bit different here. So this label here, it's called label zero. So why don't we make this change based on something. Let's say the month of February. I wanted to say happy birthday on label zero instead of main menu. So I want this to happen when the form loads. So it's giving you instructions right here, which is nice. All right, let's give it a try. Okay, let's see what happens. Clearly, it's February. Hey, there you go. That's pretty cool. Okay, let's open a form with VBA. So, here's what I'm going to propose. I want to open the form called Employees, but we want to have it ask us for the last name before it opens. So, this is going to tell us the code, and it's going to tell us what we need to do that. So clearly we need some VBA code. It's gonna call this command zero. That's gonna be the name of the button, I mean. It's giving us an input box, I like that. Nice and simple. All right. So do we have a command zero? We have a command one. Why don't we call this here command zero? Whatever's here, just get rid of. Okay, we don't want an error. And we'll call this command zero. Okay, just so we're not confused. 
or you could just say open employee by name. Okay, that's just the label part of it. All right, let's give it a try. So I'm gonna go on here, properties, event, on click. And if you do it this way, just make sure you don't put that in there twice and you don't want end sub in there twice. Otherwise you could just uh, do this part right here. Let's run it and see if it works. Say uh, LeBron James, let's put in James. Let's see what happens. There we go, it worked, awesome. All right, let's try something humorous just for fun. Let's say I want this here to be that, but in pirate speak. All right. So comments two is gonna be the pirate comment. So as soon as I enter a value or update a value in comments, it's going to make comments two sound like a pirate. This isn't the way I would do it, but it's a way of doing it, I guess. And it beats having to do it yourself. So let's try it. Let me get rid of the code I have here. Let's put that there. Let's go back and we're gonna copy the function because it's telling us below to do that. See if it works. So it's gonna replace all those. Okay, I'm just gonna enter a value here, test, okay. Okay, it got close, but it did not translate the word friend because we did not specify case sensitivity and it used a capital F for friend and not a lowercase. So sometimes these are the kinds of limitations with ChatGPT if you don't specify. So give ChatGPT a try while it's free and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.